dengan lebih mendalam secara autentik dan amat berkesan insya-Allah. Dan saya berharap uh, orang lain juga pencerah-pencerah lain dapat turut hadir dalam pengkil seumpama ini pada masa hadapan insya-Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, saya Siti Nur Hasma Idayu binti Muhammad Zamani daripada School of Technology Management and Logistic SML. Jadi saya telah mengikuti bengkel uh, problem based learning ni sepanjang dua sesi selama empat hari lah uh, bersama dengan uh, Prof uh, Prof Madia uh, Dr Zuaini dan juga uh, Prof Azia. Jadi alhamdulillah sepanjang uh, dua sesi ni memang sangat banyak uh, sharing knowledge uh, dan perkara-perkara baru yang kita saya dah belajar lah bersama dengan kawan-kawan berkenaan dengan problem based learning ni. Dan memang uh, walaupun walaupun baru bersama dalam masa empat hari ni Tapi saya amat yakin bahawa problem, uh, problem based learning ni adalah salah satu method yang kita boleh sebagai tenaga pengajar Untuk cuba, untuk explore, uh, untuk menjadikan kaedah pengajaran dan pembelajaran kita ni Bukan sahaja lebih menarik, uh, malah lebih efektif kepada student kita Di mana kita nak uh, menyediakan student kita ni kepada uh, mendapat kemahiran yang baru, kemahiran yang lebih relevan kepada uh, kerjaya mereka dan uh, apa, untuk digunakan lah bila mereka keluar daripada alam universiti nanti. Jadi saya amatlah mengharapkan kepada semua uh, para pensyarah, kawan-kawan yang masih belum lagi terlibat dengan PBL ni boleh uh, sertai bersama dengan uh, UTLC selepas ni kalau sekiranya program-program sebegini dilaksanakan lagi supaya kita boleh uh, tambah lagi uh, skill-skill kita yang sedia ada dan nah, akhirnya kita akan mampu uh, orang kata menjadi tenaga pengajar lebih baik dan juga uh, membantu universiti untuk menghasilkan para pelajar yang lebih baik untuk uh, diri mereka sendiri dan juga untuk masyarakat di mana mereka akan berkhidmat nanti. Ya, Assalamualaikum. Uh, nama saya Nurul Shazana Syamuddin. Saya daripada School of Tourism, Hospitality and Event Management. Uh, saya uh, sekarang ni mengambil modul keempat Alternative Assessment dalam IAP. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Nama saya Meja Nuzita Haji Aziz. Saya daripada School of Economic, Finance and Banking. Uh, sekarang saya ambil modul IAP 4 ataupun Alternative Assessment. Uh, sebenarnya banyak yang kami belajar daripada training ini sebab sebelum ni saya adalah sebagai seorang PhD holder katakan uh, senior lecturer. Saya sebenarnya tak sampai lagi setahun daripada dalam sebagai pensyarah kanan ni. Jadi saya tak ada basic dalam education ataupun untuk mengajar uh, student. Jadi dengan daripada IAP uh, modul uh, alternatif assessment ni saya belajar banyak benda. Contohnya uh, cara-cara uh, assessment lain selain daripada yang selalu kita guna. Traditionally macam selalu kita cakap direct dengan student, uh, face to face tu ada cuma kita tak terfikir aktiviti lain yang kita nak guna dalam kelas sebenarnya. Okey kalau Syazah kata dia baru orang kata setahun baru setahun je orang kata tapi saya ni dah lama lah. Ah uh, cumanya kadang-kadang kita ni terikat jugaklah bila orang ramai dengan dia terikut pada traditional assessment. Tapi bila sejak akhir-akhir ini saya dapati pelajar memang suka kalau kita buat alternative assessment sebab dia lebih orang kata dekat dengan pelajar kata. Kalau bagi saya lah, saya rasa sebelum ni kita buat alternative assessment tapi kita tak tahu itu adalah alternative assessment. Uh, misalnya mungkin kita dulu-dulu terikat kalau kalau buat alternative pun mungkin presentation dan sebagainya. Rupanya ada banyak lagi cara. Misalnya uh, yang baru kita belajar buat e-folio ke e-folio, journal dan sebagainya. Yang itu saya tak pernah buat lagi. Mungkin saya akan perbaharui cara tu. Macam saya pula, sebab saya pensyarah baru, saya kena ambil PGD Health, ada tu diploma untuk pelajar baru. Jadi saya tahulah sedikit-sedikit, macam saya tahu apa tu basic formative assessment, saya tahu apa tu summative assessment. Tapi dalam kelas tu cuma secara basic, tak in detail. Jadi bila dalam kelas ni saya tahu, oh macam ni rupanya bukan formative assessment tu sekadar quiz, rupanya ada cara je. Formatif ni macam mana nak buatnya, kita kena ada step by step baru untuk sampai summative assessment sebenarnya. Okay. Membagi saya, memang kita orang, saya lah, saya pernah guna cuma sekadar macam presentation, okay, final report. Tu memang sekadar kita tahu tu adalah assessment, final attention assessment. Cuma selepas ni saya akan guna tapi dengan cara lain. 
Sebelum ni kita guna hanya okey itu hanyalah untuk summative kita tak menggunakan dia dalam segi formative kita tak buat rubrik sebenarnya perlunya rubrik daripada awal sehingga ke ujung iaitu itu dan dinamakan akhirnya iaitu summative assessment itu bagi saya bagi okay, macam pula itu juga saya rasa sebelum ni kita agak confuse sikit dari segi formative dengan summative kadang-kadang kita gunakan yang formative tu sebagai summative sebenarnya sepatutnya pada masa akan datang ni Uh, kita kena bagi banyak feedback pada pelajar supaya dia sampai kepada tahap yang terbaik bukan first time tu kita anggap sebagai summative saja dulu ada yang kita kena uh, rancang permulaan kita kena tahu setiap aktiviti kita kena tahu sel oh kita kita kena kaitkan pula dengan soft skill kita dan kita kena nak kait juga semua tu dengan rubrik sekali kalau tak ada semua tu jadi adalah susah untuk kita um, Uh, plan atau rancang kita punya sesuatu alternative assessment tu sebenarnya uh, Apa yang saya dapati sebelum-sebelum ni kita menggunakan rubrik yang sedia ada untuk membuat uh, kata penilaian pelajar Saya rasa lepas pada ni saya akan lihat pada CLO saya dan rubrik tu saya akan susun ikut apa keperluan yang sebenarnya Dan apa yang saya pelajari rasanya yang terakhir uh, dalam kita punya SOW pun sebenarnya kena clear daripada awal jadi preparation ni kena daripada sekarang bukan tunggu bulan 10 esok baru nak prepare. The train is sangat sangat bagus. Saya rasa adalah pertama kali saya training yang betul in depth um, sebagai seorang orang kata pensyarah educator. Sebab saya rasa saya sebelum ni saya tak faham apa tu CEO. Saya tak tahu apa tu rubrik semuanya. Adakah saya selalunya ambil je rubrik mana-mana secara adalah jujurnya saya tak tahu pun oh rupanya ada rubrik tertentu untuk tertentu sekali. Jadi training ini membuatkan saya faham bahawa pentingnya syllabus dan pentingnya apa yang plan pengajaran pada awalnya sekali untuk kita mengajar sesuatu sesuatu subjek bukannya kita kena oh ambil je copy and paste semuanya daripada previous lecturer ke tak. Sebenarnya kita kena rancang sendiri dan anggap sesuatu subjek itu sebagai kita punya sendiri. Okay, kalau ikut training sebenarnya bila kita dah lama sangat dalam pengajaran, kita perlu pada nafas baru. Uh, saya dapati program yang dibuat dalam AP4 ni iaitu bila ada Avengers Yang itu nampak kalau student saya pun dia memang minat lah Sebab kita melihat pada keadaan yang sebenar Dan juga bagaimana kita adapt dengan situasi pembelajaran Yang saya rasa itu saya akan guna pakai masa yang datang Saya nak berterima kasih kepada semua trainer-trainer kami yang sangat committed Dalam memberikan kami segala ilmu yang kami tahu daripada A to Z Um, saya tahu semua yang saya patut tahu sebagai seorang pesara. Saya sangat terima kasih kerana bila saya tanya tu ada je masa untuk bagi kami jawapan dan bagi kami faham sesuatu benda tu. Uh, saya juga nak ucap terima kasih kepada semua trainer. Uh, dan saya rasa sepatutnya program seperti ini diikut lebih ramai pesara. Dan mungkin pada masa akan datang saya akan trace sedikit pada rakan-rakan saya dan bila kalau tak berkena kita ajak dia datang pula ke program kita datang. Scholar Symposium ISS 2021 Virtual Conference Edition. We will now proceed to the next agenda, Forum on New Norm in Higher Education, moderated by Associate Prof. Dr. Sarima Shaikh Abdullah. Our panelists are Associate Professor, Technologist Dr. Muhammad Hasbullah Omar, Associate Professor Dr. Zwaini Isha, Dr. Fatia Abu Bakar, and Dr. Nurliana Bukhari. Without further ado, I will, we would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Sarima Shaikh Abdullah to take her seat, invite the panelists and introduce the panelists before beginning to conduct the forum. Thank you, Madam Azam. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Welcome all to the Forum on New Norm in Higher Education. I am Sarima. I will be moderating this session. With us today, we have module trainers for UTLC's Inspirational Academic Program, IAP, to talk about the specific modules which are intended to develop talents uh, for future leaders and champions in teaching and learning. Let me begin uh, by introducing the panelists. First, we have uh, Dr. Fatia Binti Abu Bakar, uh, the trainer for Neil. Uh, nurturing, engaged, and empowered learners. Now, Dr. Fatia uh, received her PhD in accounting from University of Malaysia. She is a senior lecturer at 
Tunku Putri Intan Safina School of Accountancy, uh, TISA UUM, College of Business, University of Tara Malaysia. She has 15 years of experience in teaching and research. Her research interests include financial accounting and reporting, corporate social responsibility, Islamic accounting, and accounting education. She has presented uh, papers in various national and international conferences and published papers in Scopus and also local and international referee journals. She has written six book chapters. She has been involved in inspirational academic uh, program uh, since 2016 for learner diversity module and learning engagement and motivation module. Uh, welcome Dr. Fatia to the session. Now, next we have, um, hold on. Next we have uh, with us, uh, Associate Professor TS, Dr. Muhammad Hasbullah Omar, the trainer for interactive digital learning or known as uh, IDL. Dr. Muhammad Hasbullah is an Associate Professor at University of Utara and is presently the director of UUM STEM Academy. He received Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Electronics, Telecommunications and Computer Engineering from the University of Bradford, UK in 1991. Uh, Dr. Hasbullah has received a Master and Doctor of Philosophy in Information Technology in 2002 and 2011 respectively from UUM. He is actively involved in training and mentoring UUM lectures in web 2.0 technology since 2018, which include tools for higher uh, institution teaching and learning. Has Dr. Hasbullah was also involved in long-term research grant scheme, LRGS, FRGS, and other research schemes by the government and industrial grants. Uh, I welcome you, Dr. Hasbullah, uh, as one of the panelists. Next, our third panelist is Associate Professor Dr. Zwaini Isha who is the trainer for problem-based learning. Dr. Zwaini uh, is an associate professor, similar to Dr. Uh, Fatia at Tengku uh, Putri Intan Safina School of Accountancy. She holds a Bachelor of Business Administration and Accounting degree from Western Michigan University, a Master of Science degree from University of Missouri, Kansas City, USA, and a doctorate degree uh, from Southampton University, UK. She joined UGM as a lecturer in 1990. Her areas of interest are corporate governance, corporate social responsibility, corporate diversification, and financial reporting. She is a master trainer of the Higher Education Leadership Academy, ACAPT, for industrial training and problem-based learning modules. She has been involved in delivering workshops as well as mentoring young academics in teaching and learning. Welcome, Dr. Zuaini. Last but not least, we have with us Dr. Nuliana Bukhari, our trainer for alternative assessment. Dr. Nuliana Bukhari received her PhD in educational research measurement and evaluation from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, USA and her master in research measurement and evaluation from the University of Miami. Her research focuses on issues of fairness in testing, technology integration in assessment, understanding learners, assessment design, validation and psychometric estimation. She is involved in a semester long professional engagement at the international renowned testing company. CTB McGraw-Hill Education in Monterey, California in summer 2015. Starting in June 2021, she serves as the member of the Board of Studies for the Master in Measurement and uh, Assessment Program at University of Malaya. She was one of the facilitators for the Noble Training organized by the Higher Education Department, uh, JPT for Cluster 2 Cognitive Skills. She is also an active member in international organizations such as the American Educational Research Association, ERA, and the National Council on Measurement in Education, NCME. She has served as a secretary for the Malaysian Psychometric Association, MPA, 
a national organization focusing specifically in psychometric uh, since 2018. Welcome, Dr. Nuliana. Welcome, everyone. Now, let us proceed with the first speaker, Dr. Fatia, who will be sharing with us about the IAP module on nurturing, engaged, and empowered learning, NEIL. So, Dr. Fatia, um, the mic is all yours. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dan uh, salam sejahtera. Thank you to uh, Dr. Sarima as a moderator uh, for the forum. Okay, first of all, uh, thank you to UTLC uh, for uh, organizing uh, ISS uh, to uh, 2021 and also uh, this, uh, this uh, forum. As a pl uh, platform for us, okay, uh, to share or promote, okay, uh, our modules, uh, nurturing, engage, and empower, uh, engage and empowered learners, okay, or the short name is NIL. Actually, um, this module has two part, okay. Um, the first one is um, uh, learners diversity, okay, and the second one is on um learning, engagement, and uh, motivation. Okay, before I uh, we discuss further, let me uh, introduce and share some of the uh, uh, one uh, the 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 flyers that we prepare uh, to uh, to, to take a look the uh, the 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 brief. Okay, or the synopsis of uh, the module. Okay, uh, let me uh, share. Okay. All right, let me, okay. So uh, let me introduce the master trainer for the, um, for the module, okay. The first one we have uh, Professor Dr. Rosna, okay. And the second one we have uh, Professor Dr. Fauzia, okay. And then uh, uh, the associate professor, Dr. Tunku Faika. And uh, we have uh, associate professor, Dr. Aizan. And next, we have Professor Dr. Neha Maldiv. Actually, um, uh, she is a former uh, our visiting uh, lecturer in SOE, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And lastly, we have uh, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Nor, uh, Nor Hafiza. Okay, it is our master trainers. So uh, for facilita uh, facilitators, because um, uh, actually uh, since 2016, uh, I'm just a participant okay, from, uh, for this module. Okay, after that, I, I start with as a beginner, then intermediate, then advanced module. And uh, then um, the, uh, Dr. Faika and Dr. Hafiza invite me and uh, Dr. Saliza and also Dr. Hasniza to join the team uh, as part of the members in the uh, near module. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned earlier that we have uh, for facilitators, we have Dr. Uh, Norhasniza, uh, Dr. Saliza and uh, Mira. All right. Okay, so uh, as we can see, uh, Neil actually um, combining two modules, okay. And uh, we have the, you can see that we have uh, the, the, the module there. Okay, uh, so uh, it, is, uh, it has been published in uh, for uh, ACAP uh, in 2012, okay. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, first publication, uh, the, these two modules is in 2018, okay. And uh, we rebrand uh, this, uh, this module to, uh, to NIL in 2019, okay. So actually, uh, there are two series, okay, there are two series in this module. Uh, for series one, basically, we are looking on the theory, okay, on the understand the concept of uh, uh, learner diversity, and also how we want to engage and uh, motivate students in, um, in teaching and learning, okay, and um, we have discussed several theories. Okay, we look. Uh, we take a look some uh, the game. Okay, to understand uh, the, the the student. Okay, we want to understand the student first. Okay, and then uh, at the end of C, uh, series one, normally we have uh, assignment. Okay, we have assignment where we um, uh, uh, we ask the participant. Okay, uh, to plan uh, their. Um, some sort like project lah, okay, in the in the classroom. So we use as uh, the classroom setting as our um, 
as uh, the, the the context uh, the context of the uh, project too. okay then the plan whether they want to go for a research case at the point they want to do for a teaching case okay based on the uh, students uh, classroom setting okay so um, then they prepare uh, the the one is the, uh, the assignment for a uh, series one and uh, for series two okay we more on practical where uh, we want to um, engage the student uh, uh, with um, certain tools like you know uh, we are you uh, what are the tools that we can use okay to engage this and motivate the student uh, like are we using keys uh, for my kid uh, in my classroom normally um, we are using annual report okay uh, to let them uh, discuss uh, relate okay the the con uh, the content that we have already uh, uh, learned uh, during our lecture then they have to take a look at the annual report uh, to understand better okay it is among the things uh, among the uh, among the things that we can uh, do to uh, encourage them to participate in the classroom okay and um then we we monitor the during the, the semester uh, we maybe we uh, give them uh, some uh, questionnaires reflective notes okay to uh, to understand whether they can um, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, be with us or ataupun they can uh, understand better uh, the con uh, the content of the uh, the syllabus okay all right, so actually uh, for a side, uh, what we target for the participant uh, in this module is that at the end, hopefully at the end of attending this uh, module, they can produce a research paper where they can um, present it okay, in ISS. So we have, uh, for, for instance, in uh, ISS 2021, we have uh, several papers from this module then they prepare uh, using a case, okay, case study style ataupun case study approach. Then uh, they prepare the research um, a paper. Then they, uh, of course, they, uh, for a second admission, of course, they can hit to KPI. Lah. The first one is uh, for publication. And the second one is uh, for uh, seminar, okay, and because the publication, because the, the part, uh, because the paper is part in uh, in the proceeding, okay, and for um, a seminar, of course, they present it. Uh, so, so actually, uh, we want to utilize uh, the uh, the uh, the the participations of the um, the lecturers in this uh, module. They can uh, utilize. Uh, by uh, you know producing the uh, research paper then presented in the ISS and any other conference okay so uh, what else um, I want to share uh, so actually um, this module actually um, it is uh, you can uh, you can apply okay uh, what we can uh, it is more on sharing what I can see it is more on sharing where we try because we can get from different uh, school of uh, different school okay so maybe uh, from accounting perspective is slightly different okay from uh, SOE at the SOC and so on so we can share our practice so um, hopefully what uh, what what we want to know is we want to motivate because especially in uh, online learning when we are in the covid uh, punya, uh, uh, when the outbreak of the covid ni we want to it is very struggle uh, for the first two semester uh, last two uh, two three uh, last two semesters too, we are still struggling to change okay from face to face to online learning so we try to get uh, you know uh, how we want to understand the student okay because we are not uh, you know they're not in front of us okay so we have to be familiar with uh, the the uh, the interactive uh, digital learnings you know and, and maybe after the, the the next speaker or the next uh, panelist will discuss uh, in details okay how we want to engage them like uh, we still uh, wondering whether they are you know, uh, uh, understand or they just my 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 daughter said just parking okay you just they just log in and in, uh, or they just scan the attendance and they go somewhere else without uh, without uh, 
understand or listens to our uh, our lecture. So yeah, it is quite challenging for us, uh, but uh, we try uh, as best as we can. Okay, to adapt with this um, uh, 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 the new norms. Okay, of uh, online learning. So hopefully uh, by uh, using case study okay, other, or PPL and so on. So hopefully we um, we can uh, and how we can encourage uh, students to participate actively in class. Uh, so we have to uh, choose where uh, the right tools okay uh, to make sure that student uh, be with us uh, and understand what we want to discuss about. Okay, I think, uh, is it 50 minutes, <laughs> Dr. Sharima? Um, yeah? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I forgot <laughs> to keep the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. So. Okay. Uh, I think you have uh, roughly a bit, a bit more time, yeah. just a little bit more, yeah, to, yes. to, to wrap up maybe. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to those who are interested uh, to join uh, us in this module, I hope that um, we will um, please come and uh, share the 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 you know the the the, the we are the the approach that you have uh, in your class to um, make sure that our student uh, engage and uh, motivated okay uh, to. Um, to uh, join uh, teaching and I mean uh, to go the process of teaching and learning and um, uh, very important for us uh, to understand the diversity because uh, our student has um, different background, dif different uh, uh, if you are teaching a uh, postgraduate student Okay, so they have maybe uh, they have uh, part timers uh, uh, part timer students uh, that they are still working and so on. So we have to understand uh, them uh, carefully before we design uh, our uh, teaching delivery to make sure that uh, our teaching delivery is uh, you know suitable and uh, comfortable with them. And uh, of course, when you are teaching undergraduate and postgraduate. Uh, the, the approach is different uh, because uh, the majority of them is different okay, age, uh, race, and so on. So it is among the things that you have to consider before um, uh, we uh, conduct the class effectively and efficiently okay, to ensure that um, what the things that you want to deliver or you want to teach them is uh, being uh, understood by them. Okay, hopefully um, uh, we can see more um, participants okay, uh, for this module because it is the first step when you want to, um, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that your, your, your teaching and learning process is being done uh, successfully. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sarima. Thank you, Dr. Fatia. I think you are an inspiration. I uh, return from uh, being a participant of the IAP module to becoming part of the training uh, team. So this is really awesome. Thank All right, thank you so much. Okay, next we turn to Dr. Muhammad Hasbullah uh, for you to share with us on interactive digital learning, IDL. Dr. Hasbullah, the mic is all yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sari. Uh, can uh, can you hear me, Dr. Sari? Okay, okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very good morning and uh, um, salam sejahtera to all. Um, my name is, uh, as mentioned, is Muhammad Asubullah Omar uh, from the School of Computing. Uh, and thank you for UTLC for inviting me uh, to be in the forum uh, to... Uh, some sort of uh, promotes uh, the uh, uh, digital learning, uh, in, uh, interactive digital uh, learning. Okay, I, I would like to share some slide that I prepared. Can I share screen? Uh, let me share screen. 
Okay. Um, okay. Um, interactive digital learning um, is actually um, the enabler, uh, uh, like the, the party have said uh, before. This is is uh, how to nurturing, engaging, and so forth. So. Uh, in the IDL is actually the, the enabler, the technology that we impart and, then, uh, and also that we uh, suggest to the participant to, um, to uh, use uh, the technology in their teaching and learning. Okay? And in fact, uh, before the pandemic, uh, the IDL also is a very relevant, uh, although you are using it uh, conventional way, uh, uh, using face to face. Eh? Okay, uh, this is the uh, some of the um, the things that um, being um, uh, transferred lah during uh, in, in our IDL. Um, if you look into the teaching and learning nowadays, that's not the same anymore. We we come we we came from the the uh, the background of using um, uh, transparency whiteboard and so forth. Nah? And then now suddenly have been changed eh, uh, to uh, using technology. PowerPoint nowadays is actually going to phase out. Okay, <laughs> all right. So this is the, the the situation now. And technology have changed uh, with the other uh, way that that we uh, deliver things. Okay, we teach and also the learning also need to be independent and something like that. Okay. And educators need to adapt uh, to this new uh, environment. So, um, um, with the pandemic, is rapidly uh, enhance the uh, technology adoption. Uh, whether uh, we are uh, actually um, what we are doing in remote learning synchronously, actually we just move our teaching from the classroom to the webex or or, or zoom or whatever. Um, uh, virtual conference uh, software. Well, however, it's not that true uh, uh, electronic learning uh, that what we want to stress in this IDL. Okay. And then how to engage student in learning. Okay. Um, um, I was asked um, uh, previously in, in one of the um, uh, training, uh, say that what, what, what do you feel um, using this? Uh, tools right, uh, Zoom, Webex, and so forth. Huh? Uh, the first thing come up with my mind is actually uh, I'm feeling like um, being like a DJ. <laughs> I don't know whether you can agree with me uh, because of uh, DJ, like a DJ, you just keep on talking and talking. What what happened to the students? Sometimes student like what Dr. Patia said, just maybe the student just park uh, the the what the uh, the virtual uh, video conferencing and then they can do anything else okay I am sure that uh, you have faced this situation where the student came to the class virtually without um uh, what we call enabling their uh, camera and so forth um and also we also uh, some sort of uh, don't want to um. Uh, what we call make them open uh, the camera because of the uh, there are some might be some some uh, what we call privacy uh, issues and so forth okay so there are other other ways actually uh, to do it okay so uh, we'll be covered into the this IDL as well uh, challenge making sure that knowledge uh, skills and practices well received by the students is also another another challenge that that uh, uh, we are facing okay. Uh, uh, if you if you um, remember, uh, if you can recall, that um, there are certain uh, type of student who are um, involved in the lab and so forth need to come to the university early, right? And because of uh, they don't have any way, okay? You need to come to the lab and uh, uh, they are need to be face to face and so forth. So how we how can we done it in 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 this? Uh, 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 e-learning and so forth, all right? And then to communicate the difference of students' learning style, okay? I've, uh, I, I've been told a case, uh, um, um, there are a case in the schools that um, the student uh, never uh, engage in the PDPR online. Uh, however, when the schools open, uh, the, 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 the student is the first one who came uh, registered to the school uh, because of maybe maybe for for the student it cannot stand 
Okay. Uh, if you've been to the school nowadays, eh, uh, you can see students running <laughs> all over the place. Okay. So uh, I don't know. But for me, um, for me, uh, this this uh, the era here is actually we are dealing with the virtual learners. Okay. Virtual learners when um, uh, the student or the, the child nowadays is, is more on the, uh, the video side and so forth. They can spend a lot of time uh, browsing the YouTube uh, videos rather than um, uh, sitting, uh, listen, listen to our lectures and so forth. Okay. And then this idea of evolution, I don't know whether my screen, I think, I think it being, um, being uh, what we call, <laughs> Uh, on on the right being being uh, uh, hidden by the uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, panels, but uh, this is the thing. Okay, so the the version of uh, teaching and learning we evolve from the uh, uh, blackboard, or green board, or whatever. Okay, whiteboard and so forth. But now, okay, if you look into the technology now, if we come here in immersive and learning, okay. Uh, starting uh, in 2019, we incorporate this AR, uh, augmented reality, and also VR. In fact, uh, this year, uh, we invite one of the experts in the VR and also AR. And then we also uh, handle uh, in virtual environment, which is the, uh, using the Mozilla Hub. Okay, so you can, uh, uh, that's, that's the, the, the new thing that we need to adapt. Lah. Okay, so. Uh, if you look into this picture, uh, which picture best represent your student? Okay, uh, on, on the left or on the right? Okay, so uh, is it is it just straightforward like I'm I'm doing now? <laughs> okay, so uh, so that that's the thing. Uh, sometimes they fail sick. Okay, and then uh, are we going to have on the right? Okay. On the right, the student uh, which is uh, really excited of what uh, the, uh, the teachers have been teaching about, and then maybe some demonstration there, okay, maybe some animation there, okay, uh, need to be uh, uh, created by us, lah, the content creator, okay. So, um, for the idea, we have two series, um, okay, we have uh, the, the series one is actually, actually on the interactive part of it. Okay, so we, we introduce you to the features of inter, uh, interactive digital learning, and then we, we introduce also the uh, the format of the IDL, and also how to integrate it into the uh, the tools uh, effectively. Uh, the, the series tools is actually uh, this is my part. Uh, uh, series one is actually championed by Dr. Uh, Azurinda and also Dr. Surendran, and series two is actually for. Uh, me and also Dr. Osman, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Osman uh, from the SOC. So we are exposing uh, the participant to the various tools. Okay, we don't say that uh, one, um, well, like like what Tan Sri said just now, one tool fit all. Okay, it depends on you. Uh, what are the way that uh, you want to deliver the content uh, of your of your um, specific uh, uh, what we call. A specific subject or specific course, okay, and adapt new interactive uh, technology in teaching, okay, and then explore new technologies in teaching and social learning, okay. So you need to explore, okay. Sometimes for maybe for the uh, computer science or IT, maybe we need to use another another another, another tools. Maybe for the uh, accounting and I said need to adopt another tool, okay, and and and. Uh, there are also some uh, tools that are very um, general it can be um, accepted by all, like Kahoot and so forth. Right. So uh, this is uh, what we we uh, cover in in the uh, IDL. Okay. So we have uh, four days uh, Okay. The series one is also uh, two days. Okay. This is what we uh, uh, the content of it. And then the series tools also with uh, the content of it. We have a web 2.0, social media, and so forth. Huh? Okay. And then we have also the content creation tools. Huh? Uh, content creation tools, uh, maybe uh, for, um, maybe you say that, okay, what are the content creation tools uh, that can be utilized, okay, to, to, um, to create videos, to create memes, uh, to create uh, infographic, and so forth, or, or, or you, you say that uh, the PowerPoint is too boring for you. Maybe you can go for uh, other tools, okay? 
uh, that's uh, uh, maybe Canva, maybe uh, a lot of uh, 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 tools available on, on, on the internet now. So by utilizing Web 2.0, but now it's coming to Web 3.0, which, which is involved interactive. Okay. And then this is some uh, of the comments uh, from the um, from the, the participant uh, uh, that I can capture from all the uh, facilitators and also the uh, um, what we call um, uh, master trainer. Okay, this is some of it. Uh, so uh, you can see uh, the uh, uh, like uh, I know uh, to create video using offline and online. Okay, we, we specify that. Okay, uh, one of the um, what we call uh, assignment is to create uh, this uh, using offline and online tools. Okay, we're utilizing the free uh, online and offline learning tool. And then uh, this one is quite new. I like to sh uh, the sharing from uh, cloud-based learning and then the module and also AR 3D content. Okay, so. Uh, we experience student. Uh, we experience uh, the participant with the Mozilla Hub, where instead of you are uh, getting into the video conference, but uh, you get into the Mozilla Hub um, uh, like a game environment that you are also the player. Uh, the, the 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 teachers or the the um, lecturer also one of the uh, the person inside uh, the uh, the environment using avatar and so forth. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what we uh, we did. So uh, so this is what uh, we think. Uh, whichever teaching method that you use, like this, uh, it is online. But we adopting now, at least for this semester. Maybe hopefully that next semester will be uh, face to face and on the right. Okay, so idea can enhance it using available technology to suit various learning styles of the students. Okay, so you can you can uh, know by knowing uh, the tools uh, suitable for the creating the content and also the getting the assessment. Okay, uh, so you can uh, have more interaction with the with the student and so forth. I just want to um, uh, give some. Uh, this is the promo of the uh, the the the. This is the promo of the. Um, the uh, training uh, this is the, uh, being done uh, this year uh, okay this is the trainer is the president of no azrinda saat and the the surindan sankara and the facilitator is uh, uh, technologist dr Mat uh, matibanan and also dr siji nazwa uh, for series 2 is me and dr osman there and then um, in series 2 we we we, we uh, have done some uh, what we call uh, the new thing. Uh, so we incorporate another four uh, facilitator and um, go to be um, going to be a master trainer later on. Okay, like uh, let me uh, let me recall their name. We have Dr. Johaida from the SOC. We have Dr. Juliana from Skimpa, which is the AR and also VR. And then we have Dr. Uh, Raja Haslinda, uh, and then we have uh, Dr. Nor Haiza. Okay, uh, as the uh, the trainer as well. Okay, uh, so with that, um, hope to um, to see you in the, our uh, next training session, inshallah. Uh, so I think uh, that's wrap up our my uh, my presented on presentation on the idea. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Thank you, Dr. Hasbullah, um, for the interesting sharing on IDL. PowerPoint uh, is going fossilized soon, yeah and being a DJ is no longer an option. Um, and I need to remind myself again and again. And I think um, both of you have shown that, you know, uh, joining I, um, IAP is not just about sitting and listening, but also turning into a trainers yourself. So well done, Dr. Hasbullah. And now I turn to Dr. Zwaini, uh, who's uh, Professor Madia Dr. Zwaini who will be sharing with us the overview and promoting the IAP module of problem-based learning. Dr. Zwaini, it's your turn now. Yes, thank you. Uh, so much, uh, sorry, can, let me see. 
Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Sarima. Assalamualaikum and very good morning to RSS participants and to all who joined this session. Uh, thank you also to the ISS committee, especially to the director of UTLC, Prof. Ozia, for allowing me to share about the module of IAP PPL. Okay, uh, let me share my material first. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is my material. Okay, hopefully, hope everyone here is fine. And, uh, and in this new norm, hope you are also enjoying your teaching. Uh, actually, uh, when we talk about teaching in this new norm, uh, due to this COVID-19, uh, I can feel how we struggle to ensure our post learning outcomes are met. Because besides subject matter, we also need to learn about the resources and technology in online. At the same time, we are quite blur about how our students react to this new norm because we cannot really see their faces. But still, I think it's feasible to adopt a student-centered approach during online learning because both online learning and student-centered provide flexibility to students. Okay, and my my fellow colleagues and friends, if we try to recall uh, what we what happened in I, I mean as a as, as student as our days as a student in class, I'm not sure whether you agree or not with me if I say we don't really remember the content of the course. But what we remember is our learning experience, anything that touch our emotion or feeling. So we need to keep this in mind because I believe if the emotion is okay, the learning will naturally come. So however, in our education system, because we emphasize a lot on examination uh, that requires students to memorize, we tend to focus on the content. Uh, students may score A in our class, but then when they get out to work, they may forget what they learn from us. So uh, to go beyond uh, this new norm, we should take the opportunity now to leverage technology in online learning. Uh, actually, remember, technology that we use is just to mediate our communication. And the most important uh, is not to replace us as a human. And the most important thing uh, for us is to shift our teaching paradigm. Uh, to deliver meaningful and useful experience to our students, seeing they were uh, they will face future uncertainty. Uh, kita nak cuba produce what people call a uh, future-proof student. But actually, uh, this morning when we hear from uh, Tan Sri, it's quite scary uh, to think about me, me generation. Eh? So we shouldn't just focus on covering our course outline or revising our presentation slide we should look at uh, what are the activity that can engage students to think and to get them to express uh, their thought. Okay? If we really want to help our students for their future, uh, we need to design our lesson to provide them a learning experience so they can follow breaking group, be motivated, and the most important thing, we need to challenge their curiosity rather than do the lecturing and try to cover everything in the syllabus. Okay? And I was so fortunate uh, to be able to join a workshop on PBA by John Lemmer and team from BIE, it's Bach Institute of Education USA. It was a long time ago, um, I think uh, 2006, when they came to UM. Actually that time, uh, at first I cannot imagine how would it be when I implement it in class? But uh, together with a group of lecturers uh, from accounting school, I embark on PBA. And until now, I continue the approach and I love doing PBA. And from my experience, students were willing to work hard to engage themselves in solving the challenging problem given to them. Uh, if they feel that their learning process will benefit them. And so we need to motivate them, okay? So even though uh, PBL is not a new approach in teacher learning, but it always has respectability. Because why? 
The idea of PBL is to give student learning experience and to allow them to be self-directed learner. I think this is the most important thing, to become self-directed learner. Right? So it's important for them to learn how to, uh, how and where uh, to find the right information and then uh, apply to the real world problem. So uh, I think this approach uh, uh, give the student the opportunity to explore in deep by doing and producing team together with their friend and learning with friends, they will learn a lot. Eh? Okay, uh, I was given the opportunity uh, to handle IAP. Uh, let me so if you can see, let me make it bigger. Uh, what we have in this IAP. Okay, uh, okay. And I was given the opportunity by UTLC to handle IAP for PBL. So I used this uh, uh, opportunity uh, to share with the participant uh, together with Prof. Dr. Noor Azia. Alhamdulillah, so far we have done it three times and the program is open to all lecturers in UEM. I would like to say thank you to all previous participants of IAP PBL for your cooperation. And uh, we had a great time with all of you. Okay, uh, for the program, the participant must attend two series of workshops, eh? just like what we hear from the previous uh, panel. Uh, both series are handled in full two days. Uh, the participant also need to submit assessment to complete their participation. Eh? But actually, at the workshop we designed allow the participants to create their own project. And the final task is for them to prepare PBM materials that they will use in their own class. Okay, and uh, so what are the, our expectation? Yeah? So our expectation, uh, the participants will be able to implement the PBL in their class using the material they submitted for the assignment. So when, uh, once they completed the, the workshop, they are ready to go for the PBL. That's what it is what we, we expect. Yeah? So and in our latest workshop, as part of the assessment, uh, the participants are also required to share in sway their journey using PBL. Because, uh, because in, in the last two uh, workshops, uh, I did not follow them. So this time I asked them to prepare uh, some like to, to share their journey using PBL so that uh, we can, we, they can just update sway. Okay, and then the participants are also given opportunity to present the paper on uh, PBL in IS. I can see some of them are here. I will say thank congratulations uh, for being able to come and join IS. Uh, we will join your presentation later, inshallah. Eh? So the content, let's see the content. So what we have uh, here. So the content of the, uh, so let me show here. So the content uh, basically we cover how to design a PBL project and also how to facilitate the PBL in class. So we are referring to standards set by the BIE. I really go for BIE way of doing PBL. So in both workshop, we will discuss how to grab student attention and to trigger their thinking by designing a relevant lesson uh, and crafting a challenging problem. So this is the, our focus. Eh? Uh, to be, because for me, to be a successful PBL practitioner, uh, we also need to know how to make PBL class interesting and also to understand how to build the culture and the mindset of your student. And we know our, our student, eh? so we need to, to, to set their mindset. Eh? Also, the facilitation skill is very, very important. Um, uh, because we must also incorporate scaffolding activities because we let them do things, but we need to help them. Eh? So we need to incorporate scaffolding activities and we also need to intervene. We need to have some intervention uh, to help students to move forward. So we need to have that skill eh, to help our students. Eh? Okay, and then, uh, but, but then, uh, but then uh, the issue is some say they use PBL. Uh, when in fact, they do not use the correct method. So they, they thought that when they solve the problem, problem solving, it's something they are just doing the problem solving, but actually they are not doing PBL. So in this case, uh, the positive effect of learning PBL cannot be noticed by students. A student will be frustrated 
lecturer will be disappointed and the worst thing, the reputation of the PBL will be damaged. Okay, I, so, uh, I would like to say that if you want to join, uh, to do PBL, you need to go for the training eh? anywhere, but it's a training and eh? you, you need to be trained. It's not fair to the student if you are doing the PBL, but you are not being trained. So I believe we need to be fair to our students. Uh, we need to prepare them to face the challenges of this 21st century by exposing them to authentic problem. So when we say authentic problem, we try to bring the real world problem to the classroom, but it's not exactly the real, but at least we're using the real tools or what a real standard. Yeah? So that's what we call it, authentic problem. Uh, that, so that we, uh, this thing can develop uh, our student critical thinking, uh, collaboration is very important, and also solving, uh, uh, solving pro problem solving uh, skill. Uh, yeah, so dalam, during this session, yeah, during we are working with them, uh, we can also include all this uh, value, how to be good, how to be kind to your, your, your members, how to listen to, how to be respect each other, how to help. Eh? So all these things we can develop while they are solving the problem or they're working together with the friends. Eh? So uh, to provide the participants uh, with the experience, let, let me show, um, we also expose the participants with the simulation at the beginning of the session. So uh, this, uh, this is to allow them to act as a student. So they, become, they, work, they will work together uh, with the uh, friends to solve the problem. And we also uh, uh, expose them to the basic thing, uh, what will happen in the PBL class. So then when they, they create the business or they design the PBL project, they can imagine what will happen later. So this is what we did in the beginning, uh, where we also provide them uh, all the materials, uh, including the instruction to students. And then all the also example of the PBL scenarios or the problem to be solved uh, to trigger the student thinking or to motivate or to stimulate their learning. And then also all the relevant materials, resources, including the rubric. So we provide them all the information. Kalau ini pun, what I have here is the same thing. It's just another example of apa ni? Uh, uh, the simulation materials that we provide to them. Okay, this is all where, where we, we where this is kind of the uh, simulation eh, that we give to them, and then all the, the rubric. Okay, okay, so this is, and then I, uh, I, will, I, I will, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you more if you ask me questions. Yeah? So that I think is enough to, for you to understand this. And then we have, uh, as a, so far, we have a good. I mean, we have we, do, we have the uh, feedback, which is not a problem. So I've captured some of it here, uh, including the one uh, given by the or done by the ETRC, and we can see there's no problem about the student uh, evaluation on the training or the workshop, and also there are also some reflection. Maybe you cannot see so clear uh, on the. Uh, what they have what happened uh, during the workshop eh? so but i can see some of them also give a positive thing a positive feedback about the workshop and also uh, the, the 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 pbl itself okay? and i also notice uh, interesting aspect of pbl is that as a lecturer we must be willing to be flexible or adaptable so if you are not really flexible, forget about PBL because we allow student voice and choice. The project may differ, depends on the student background and also input. And so, but, but while we in the process of we handling this PBL class, actually as a lecturer, we will be able to learn new things because we don't start by giving them the, 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 the lecture. So we let them explore. So while they are exploring, we also learn the three things. So this is very interesting about doing uh, PBL. So that's the reason why I really enjoy uh, doing all this PBL. So I think uh, that's it for me. 
So if you are planning uh, to have a fun and meaningful learning experience to your student, um, and also if you want to design an interesting project, uh, come and join us in uh, IAPPBL. So well, during the project, during the session, uh, the participants will share their idea. Very amazing. I, I really amazing when they present their, their, their ideas, how they want to do, what the, the, the scenario that they want to use eh, uh, to present to the student. Very amazing. I really uh, are proud of all the participants. Eh? Okay, uh, so that's it for me. I thank you for your attention and I pass back to the moderator. Thank you, Dr. Sarima. Thank you, Dr. Zwaini. Um, well, I learned that those who join the module will first learn the what and the how of the module through experiential learning, apprenticeship, and in a fun way. And completing the module successfully will award the participants with a chance to share their experience at the ISS. I think that is uh, really wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Zwaini. So next we go to Dr. Nuliana who will enlighten us on the uh, module on alternative assessment. Uh, Dr. Nuliana, the mic is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarima, distinguished panels for this forum. And of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to share my screen. Okay. Welcome, welcome again. Oops, <laughs> here you go. I am actually one of the panels, or actually one of the trainers as well for um, this module, alternative assessment. And interestingly, uh, I am also one of the participants, I was one of the participants for the IDL, the one uh, being presented by Dr. Habsbullah earlier. So a learner and a trainer at the same time, because we go <laughs> hand in hand. <clears throat> Here, um, I'm going to share um, the, the highlights of our module, module four, we call it alternative assessment under the inspirational academician program. This is actually, uh, yeah, this is, I think the best part to have a comprehensive one is showing the poster. <laughs> This is our promotional poster um, for 2021 program uh, module. And here, if you know, we have four, four of us, uh, Professor Dr. Fauzia, Dr. Norsiha Alias, and also Prof. Dr. Haslinda. <clears throat> the, 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 the module can be, yeah, yeah, it's still two series, like uh, the rest of the modules presented before. And here on the first series, we focus on theories more like some background on alternative assessment and also um, give the, the highlights, the needs uh, can, can really to the 21st century learning and stuff. Um, at this point, I think it is good to share also like alternative assessment if you, simply speaking, is uh, assessment that is not standardized test or the one that conventionally did, done. Uh, such as paper pencil, or even online is is online, but it's just testing like people select from the correct the 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 options, the answer options. So alternative assessment is beyond or anything that is not that the standardized assessment. So here, <clears throat> where we try to to show that there are many ways of assessing. Even some people think that PBL, the problem based learning uh, presented by Dr. Zwaini earlier, that's also under the roof of um, alternative assessment. Okay, so here for the first series, we cover that, like what, what is, you know, how to and give some, still uh, with, with some hands-on stuff. But when, interestingly, when we move to the second series, it's real, it's more on the best practices. Here we call it triple A's, <laughs> appreciating alternative assessment, just to let them appreciate. <laughs> that means, you know, why they need to do that? Yeah, it's a lot of work, some people say. So we try to, to, to help them understand and appreciate uh, uh, alternative assessment notion. With the My Best Piece, the second series, where Dr. Nursia and Prof. Linda came, um, this is where they share, because they are practitioners, okay? I'm 
yeah, maybe I know theories more because I'm just new. I'm still new <laughs> in the academic world. Okay, but these are all <laughs> uh, trained uh, practitioners, you know, true practitioners. And she's from a science a quantitative school and uh, from international um, business, Islamic business school. And of course, uh, probably from uh, School of Education. Here we do a lot of uh, best practices, what, we, what they did, you know, and share them, share with the participants and let participants do it. If you notice here for the first, uh, to, for the 2021, everything is, was conducted online. Okay, mine also online, everything's online. It's all full day, full day online. And you see here, you know, it could be like, if you are into like, uh, try to, to, to do this, of course, IDL uh, module will come in place, uh, technology and assessment, okay? So everything's online, but we try to use what we can because at this time it's a new norm <laughs> and assessment must go on. Okay, so that's what we, we did. And uh, I just want to share like how it started in 2020. Okay, this is the first uh, module. And at this time we had, even though it's 2020, that time COVID is already there, still there, <laughs> but you know, the peak of it, but there were, uh, some kind of a duration where we had the opportunity to do face-to-face. Uh, -face. And all of those series were conducted face-to-face. -face. Even mine is at UTLC. And uh, yeah, everybody except for our guest speaker, we invited one from uh, UTM, University of Technology Malaysia, Associate Professor Dr. Adiba Latif. And her session was conducted online. So at that time, there's a hybrid thing and it's still sharing. Here, the same thing. It's appreciating alternative assessment, and also best practices from true practitioners. Okay, so what do we cover <laughs> in that uh, series? <clears throat> These are some snippets of uh, our activities. You know, if, of course, this one is conducted like 2021 with all the online uh, tools we conducted through Zoom. And here, if we want to add more, it's all about <laughs> snapshots of breakout rooms, snapshots of uh, participants uh, doing the activities. On, on screen, okay? but it doesn't limit us, you know, because uh, alternative assessment, it's all about flexibility. It's about seizing the, <laughs> the opportunity and trying to integrate the right tools at the right time. So here we use Mentimeter and we ask the participants, this is a, this called a muddy point clear points. And this is a snapshot of the um, clear points, what participants have you know, in mind after you know, a half, half, a, half a day uh, about the first uh, triple A. So they said, okay, now we know it's, we need to align to CLO, <laughs> but actually regardless of um, assessment with the alternative or standardized, uh, it is aligning, alignment to CLO. But with the alternative assessment module, they know we, we delve deeper. Okay, we show them how to actually constructively align uh, the assessment to CLO, okay, and the PLOs. Uh, I believe you also heard, um, the, if you saw the teaser during the break just now, uh, two of the uh, alum, alumni, we call it alumni, mentioned about that, uh, that, 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 that part that they learned. Okay, of course, and, and group work is there. It's evidence-based. We put everything there, and the, the instructions is clear, it's specific, although it's online. Okay, <clears throat> and interestingly, uh, Dr. Nursiha did role play. Hey, we did role play on Zoom, <laughs> believe it or not. This is actually uh, when they, after they came back from a breakout room, uh, they presented their role play and some of the participants you know, changed their background just to, to have a feel. This one, they were talking about um, finding halal restaurants in Geneva. Okay, I think uh, one of the participants had that uh, background, virtual background to have a feel of role play. But that's actually an alternative assessment conducted <laughs> you know, within the... the the resources available. And here, if you notice, journey through the Antiquan Road. This is also one of the um, activities. This one conducted by Prof. Linda. She's using this map and asks students to find the best, the best route possible. Um, when I say student with participants, okay? Uh, student lecturer, uh, they are doing it. This is the uh, discussion in breakout room specifically. And they, they, they presented why and make that kind of um, uh, arguments and why they decide to do to take that route <laughs> okay and this is actually what they experience so that they can actually apply it <laughs> in their own classrooms so <clears throat> we can see here um, uh, a lot of things going on during even though it's online 
Okay, and assessment is through it is uh, contextualized. You see, is authentic. Okay, and uh, yeah, these are all the snippet we have padlet to, to to store all the stuff and more some of the tasks that we have here. We put it here. We do not uh, have a chance to snip it one by one, but I think this is overall <laughs> idea. So we have here muddy points. Just now we had clear points and now muddy points and they did reflections with your pieces and stuff. So this is, I think most of us are doing it in our class, sharing uh, you know, information about students. But here we have all the activities here from the, the, all, the, the whole series, workshop one, workshop two is the, the first two series and workshop three and workshop four, the, the series, the, the second series. And this is an assessment. If you know this is about ICT, means now the we call it ultimate assessment or final project, <laughs> like a capstone basically. Uh, they have to put whatever they, they learn and to apply it to design their own alternative assessment for their course. Maybe they already applied <laughs> this semester because this was conducted last semester. So maybe some of them are doing it already in their own class. Okay. And <clears throat> so that's what we did. And I also like to share the when we did in 2000. Oops. <laughs> oh, okay. It, it moved fast. Okay, this is the one that we, we had a chance to meet face to face and the activities that we did. Okay, so uh, from here is like group discussion and on rubrics, they were uh, give, given, you know, uh, tasked to design their own rubric because just now they said we took rubric from the internet. <laughs> we use whatever is available. So now they have to de design their own rubric based on their CLOs and the attributes given, you know, based on their course, whatever they, they design. And yeah, a lot of things going on. We see here <laughs> discussion and, you know, it's, it's, it's happening. It's all about, you know, it's active and it's still um, within what you call it, the context of uh, alternative assessment. Okay. And later they come up with multimeter. This is there. This like how confident they are. And even though it's not that clear, we can see it's more like we strongly agree. <laughs> Continue on there. Okay. And here previously we did muddy point, clear point on multimeter. Now we have like <laughs> earlier we did like you know, sticky notes. So the muddy point is actually the the red color paper. <laughs> you know, looks like mud. And this one is clearer. What they help. And also the, this is the activity that we did. Yeah, a lot of discussion and stuff. Uh, they share, participants share, you know. Our lecturers are very uh, <clears throat> um, open and they share the practices and they, they see how can they improve, okay? A lot of hands-on, though, they have to design also. This is last year. And uh, we don't stop our program or our module within that future learning lab or even Zoom. So when we had that opportunity to meet face-to-face, -face, <laughs> we also did this. Um, XDIT program, uh, XDIT activity, we call it explore, design, and uh, develop. So here <laughs> we went outside. This is a this is a UUM. If you are not from UUM, look at how, how beautiful UUM is. Huh? <laughs> we did this and uh, the participants need to measure, <laughs> measure bridges, you know, uh, went to uh, deer park and count deers <laughs> as part of activities based on that to show that we can also do that. Inshallah, we, when, uh, when we can really go back you know, and do this with our students when they come back to face-to-face -to -face mode. Okay, and then we, oh yeah, this is, we took a, get a golf cart, there's a long golf cart and uh, from, from our uh, training area there. But things happen, this is where the collaborations, you know, the socialization among participants from different schools. And later we regroup, you know, to see how do you, how do they feel about that, okay? exploration, discovery, and development activity. So things are, <laughs> were fun, <It's> super fun, <laughs> I, I tell you. And it's, yeah, this is actually what we did, uh, the, the overall for 2021. And this is the, the name of it. I feel the breeze of measurement, <laughs> okay? It's like, it's not only in the classroom, you know, you, you need to feel fresh. We want to humanize people, right? So we need to, to interact with the environment. Okay, and these are the snippet for 2020 um, activities for the module. And what did they say? What did participants say? Because I said it was fun earlier, because of course I'm the trainer, because I said I'm, it was fun, but participants agree because these are what the, the what I can get, gather <laughs> within these uh, slides, but there are more. Some of the uh, snippets here, yes. 
I've learned uh, how to assess students in critical situation <laughs> while maintaining quality. Quality means, you know, the design is proper, it's based on the theories, it's based on the principles of assessment, you know. I like the presenters and facilitators, they are so supportive. <laughs> and they understand the in-depth of alternative assessment, how to develop a proper assessment, okay. And again, rubric, CLOs, nature, explore discovery is most important to students rather than just stay in class. Okay, maybe sometimes, you know, it's not, we cannot go outside, there comes the augmented reality and immersive learning. Okay, to experience such. But okay, I will attend future workshops. So those who haven't attended, <laughs> please <laughs> feel free to join. Okay, I like the discussion session. And her authentic means uh, one of the facilitators, they mentioned her authentic experiences shared because they are practitioners. So it's authentic. <laughs> they come, you know, it's fresh from, from the oven, <laughs> fresh from the, the doer. Okay, uh, again, CLOs, PLOs, and you know, some people said, Banyakkan lagi kursus means have more like this and include more <laughs> academicians. Okay, and here is a new lecturer should come. <laughs> and here is a no junior and senior academicians means everybody, everybody, regardless of <laughs> you know, your experience. You know, alternative assessment is, is one way. And if you want to know more, come and join us. Okay, and here again, outdoor activity. And this one, the last one is like, exposed to theory and practice so they get both you know to do it the right way maintain quality okay and hopefully we are moving forward with that <clears throat> okay so yeah what we hope um you know and, yeah these are all the participants where, where i can snip <laughs> okay um we as trainers also you know as educators you know we hope that um we miss we i am a trainer and also the participants i think we continuously improve our assessment practices for the sake of students we are we are doing it. it's a lot of work but it's for the best of the benefits of the students okay um, of course if we do standardized uh, tests all the time you know they can find all answers on course hero on all the many platforms that we we, we couldn't control because it's there and it's uh, you know establishing and of course, we hope to embrace the authenticity, you know, put them in context, real world, you know, be more flexible, adaptable, and more, even with the 21st century skills. And again, align with our uh, national education philosophy. Okay. And we hope with the best practices, we are more empathetic. You know, we care about students given you know, whatever they have and assess, assess them correctly. You know? Empathetic, active, experiential, all those verbs that you can throw to make sure learning is meaningful. Uh, of course, at the end, we want to strengthen regional and global collaboration. Regional here means within departments, within schools. You know, we can share um, our CLOs, but come up with a bigger project that being shared with two different courses covering different CLOs. That's a regional at least, we can hope, you know, that's, or across schools, <laughs> okay, global collaboration. You know, internationally, perhaps with the mobility and stuff. And I think um, that's it that we I would like to share about alternative assessment. Um, thank you and happy assessing. And again, hope to see you next year. Yeah, 2022 to next year. And enjoy the conference. Thank you, Dr. Noliana. Listening to all speakers, I think they have made a good case for everyone to join uh, the IAP modules. And uh, so as Dr. Nodiana said, feel free to join. Now I now open, uh, I would like to invite questions from the audience. Uh, you can either speak directly or share in the chat. Are there any questions in the chat? Okay, that's one comment from Dr. Intan. Uh, this module is really significant within the pandemic norm, challenging, but really humanizing approach. Tomorrow we'll share my experience apply uh, one of the modules yeah, in my class, challenging too, to tackle our students' problem dig digitally. Okay, is there any question from uh, the audience? If ada tak? Kalau tak ada, I will ask questions. 
Uh, okay, maybe uh, Dr. Zwaini, maybe briefly you can explain what are the most challenging uh, part in doing PBL, in, in get, getting students to do the PBL. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sarima, for the question. Actually, when you ask me what would be the challenging part, uh, when I first started use, uh, using PBL, all parts are challenging. But things are getting better uh, from time to time. I even managed to allow more voice and choice to students now because I, I, I'm become a veteran of PBL. Eh? But, uh, but I can say that the most challenging part is to prepare PBL scenario or the problem itself because we want to trigger the student thinking uh, to motivate them to solve the problem. Eh? The PBL problem is the most problem to us, actually. It's a problem for to, to, to craft it. Eh? So we should, uh, we could remember that we want to design a problem or to, to design thing uh, that not only develop the, not only about learning the content, but also want to develop the skill, eh? the, or the problem solving skill, communication skill, all these things. So we want to ensure that it will included in our, it will, it will happen. Okay, and then in uh, designing a good problem, uh, it's not easy task actually. Uh, because you need to, uh, the problem need to be authentic. Then the same thing, it need to be interesting uh, and complex so that they will be, they will have engagement. So if the problem is Googleable, they can ju just get the problem. Uh, they can just Google the answer. So, but we want to encourage good, uh, interaction, uh, collaboration. So they need to discuss and uh, finally they come to the consensus to agree to what they have done. At the same time. Uh, we want to make the student realize uh, the uh, learning outcome by reading the problem. We don't tell them in the beginning what they want to do, what they want to achieve, but they tell us because they are the one who own the learning. So we give the ownership of learning to them. So they need to tell us by reading the scenario. So they want to tell us what they want to do, what they want to achieve. So what will be, uh, what they want to read, what they want to open. Uh, the information that they want to get. So it's, we give the, uh, the, the ownership to them. So it's not easy actually, uh, but we want to make sure that, the, especially when we want to make sure our course learning outcome achieve. Uh, so that's All right. What, uh, thank you, Dr. Salim. Okay. Uh, Dr. Zuhaini, that's one question in the chat. Ada beza tak PBL dengan problem-based assessment? Bolehkah kita apply hanya problem-based assessment sahaja, bukan problem-based learning, pandangan Prof? Okay, uh, problem-based assessment. Actually, um, dalam uh, actually saya rasa tak sah. Benda tu yang when you do the assessment, you when you come to the when the student are producing things, they are output they need to produce. So when they are producing things, the the the, the product might be the presentation the uh, apa tu, uh, written explanation, uh, this is the product. So the, the assessment will be the same thing. So it's how you, uh, if you learn from the alternative assessment, so but just the approach. When come to the assessment, we, they, they need to do the thing that we always do. So actually problem-based learning is not something totally different. We are not run away our, from our traditional way of teaching. Cuma kita katakan di sini, we are doing upside down. Instead of we are giving the lecturing, then we give them the problem at the, at the end to, to, to make sure that they understand what we have lecture. So what we are doing is just upside down. So we are still doing the, if we can do still the mini lecture, but we don't have to lecture from A to Z. So we don't have to show that we are understand everything. We want them uh, to show, we want them to visible the thinking. And so I think there's no problem with the assessment. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Dr. Zwaini. I'm afraid we are running out of time. Uh, so I wish I could ask more questions to the other panelists, but we can do this later over a coffee maybe. Um, thank you, Dr. Fatia, Dr. Hasbullah, Dr. Zwaini, and Dr. Nuliana for enlightening us on the IAT models. Uh, it is hoped that more lecturers will join any of the modules to become part of uh, future academic leaders in teaching and learning. So, and with that, I bid Assalamualaikum. Um, I pass it back to uh, Madam Azam. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you.
Thank you, Associate Prof, Dr. Sarima, and all the panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have a short break and we will come back to the parallel session of the conference at dedicated room virtually at 12.05 p.m. sharp. All participants and presenters are advised to be in the respective presentation rooms at least five minutes prior to the time so that we will be able to start as scheduled. See you soon.